In this video, I want to give you just a quick introduction into working drawings. Working drawings are an engineer's blueprints and typically have all the information that's necessary to be able to produce the part. For this example, I'm just going to go through the extreme basics of it. I have a part here on my screen. I'm going to come all the way down to the bottom left. I'm going to click on the plus to insert a new element and I'm going to create a drawing. For this example, I'm just going to go ahead and say OK. I'm then going to go ahead and select on the part that I would like to create the working drawing for. Onshape will then go ahead and interpret your part and try to decide a scale that it thinks is going to be appropriate for your page. For this one, I'm going to see if 1 to 1 will fit. And 1 to 1 for my specific example just happens to be a little bit too large. So what I want to do is try to determine a size that's best going to fit my paper. So for right now, half scale is going to work. So I'm going to go ahead and place that view on my paper. It then wants to know, are there any other views that I would like to add in addition? For this example, I'd like to go ahead and add a side view as well. That will allow me to go ahead and represent the thickness of the part. The nice part is, once you've put on multiple views, if you want to rearrange or reorganize the views, as you move one, the other one will adjust to it. So for right now, I have a front view that shows the main profile. I've got a side view of it that's in line with it that'll show the thickness. And then up here in this corner, I'd like to go ahead and show a 3D of what it looks like looking at it from the side. So I'm going to come up here to Projected View. I'm going to select the view that I want to project. And this time, I'm going to go ahead and drag it up at an angle. And then as I place it, it'll go ahead and place it in 3D. I hit escape to let go of that tool, and I'm just going to go ahead and rearrange them just a little bit. So I've got a front view, I've got a side view, and I've got a 3D. Sometimes we need a top view, we might need a left side view, a bottom view, there's a lot of other views that we'll get into later. So for right now, this provides me enough views to go ahead and put on some of the information I want to put on, like the overall height of this object. So I'm going to come up to the Dimension tool, and this time when I dimension, I'm not actually dimensioning the part to be able to change it. This is just proof or evidence of it. So I'm going to try to find a point down here that I can click on, and then another point, and then come across. Usually it's not that complicated to grab the points, because usually you don't have a shape that's this strange. But most of the time I have edges and that kind of stuff that I can click on. But I need to go ahead and zoom in and make sure that I've actually got that point at the farthest point. So I can click on the dimension and then if necessary I can grab that and I can change it to somewhere else. Um, I think that's going to be good enough for what I need. So right now mine is 6.391. Um, can I change the amount of decimals that's shown here? I can. I can double click it and then once I double click it I can come in here and I can change the precision. So if I only want to show one decimal or two decimals I can do that individually. I then want to go ahead and prove the thickness of the part. For this one, I'm going to go ahead and prove the size of this circle. And then I may want to go ahead and put on a width. So right now I have a height, I've got a depth, but I don't have anything that shows width other than this is really a circular pattern. So this shouldn't be any bigger than 6.39 all the way around. But I do want to go ahead, and at least for this one, improve that. The same thing, I'll go ahead and pick two points. Hit escape and then make sure I go ahead and pull that out to make sure that it's at its farthest point. And that looks good. 6.39. I'll go ahead and change my precision. So I double clicked it. I click on the dimension that's here and I can change its precision. Oops. Mm, so that one's rounding it a little bit. I may need to go ahead and pull this one away just a little bit. I must have a little spot where I don't have it quite as good as I want. Um, or for right now, I could probably just go ahead for this example, and I could just go ahead and take it down to one decimal. 
and that'll read right. Usually you don't have something that's this odd. And that's really it. So I've got my front view, I've got a side view, and I've got an isometric, and I've put on three dimensions, minimum. I put on the dimension that shows me height, width, depth, and then any specific features that are really necessary to show the client.